Well, like I was saying, salmon are important to us. That's why you learn it as a fourth grader. That's why you learn it as a seventh grader. Hopefully that's why you learn about it in high school. They're important to us for many, many reasons. One reason that they're important to us now is because we found out that they're a huge, they're the uh, food source for the rest of the orca whales. We love the orca whales. And we know that the orca whale population is going down. They're an endangered species. If something's on the endangered species list, what we're supposed to do is do everything we can to help that species. Well, with the orca whales, we're trying to help out uh, the, the, their species. Our governor, Governor Inslee, last year, he realized this. And what he did is he passed a bill that got passed just like that for $3 billion to help save our orca whales. Wow. Our president couldn't get $5 billion to build a wall. But in a heartbeat, our governor got $3 billion to help save the orca whales. How are they going to save the orca whales? Well, what they're going to do is since they eat salmon, is we're going to have more salmon available for them. So what we have to do is understand why isn't there salmon available to them as much as there was in the past. Uh, what we're doing are some things that we've done to hurt salmon. And the first thing are dams. Now your grade school answer is, well, dams are bad for salmon because they block a salmon from coming to a spawning ground. That's not right. See, you've been to a dam before. And in and, and a dam, there's a, there's a whole lot of water on this side and there's not much water there. And we talked about a dam that water goes through here and it goes through that chur, uh, spinning propeller, that turbine. Well, the salmon is going to come up and it's going to hit the concrete wall and go, damn. And then it's going to go, wait a minute, I hear a waterfall. I love waterfalls. See, when they built most dams, what they did is they diverted some of the water. And they diverted some of the water over here and they created a salmon ladder, a whole bunch of concrete steps. And then the water goes over those concrete steps and it's uh, supposed to simulate a waterfall. And then the salmon go, I love waterfalls. And then they go, jump, 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 jump. And they get to the other side of the dam. So dams are not bad for the adult salmon. The babies, the babies, they're born and they're swimming down. Uh, they hit the concrete wall. They haven't learned how to swear yet. So they go, ouch. And they go, oh, how am I going to get around this concrete wall? And one of them goes, hey, I feel a current. Follow me. And they go, ah, oh, no, by their propeller. And they get chopped up by their propeller. So what you're going to write down is why bad. Why they're bad is they chop up the babies. Another reason why it's bad. I, I got it small. Over here, I got the whole state of Washington. Ah, uh, if you were in class, I talked to one of you. I talked about the Columbia River, the biggest river of them all. And the Columbia River, it starts way up in Canada. It starts way up in Canada. And, 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 and the snow melts up there, and, and, and it goes right down through here. And back in the day, it would take seven days for the Columbia River to go through the state of Washington. And during that seven days, it'd warm up a little bit. Well, snow melts at 33 degrees. So as it goes through to eastern Washington for seven days, it might warm up to 42 degrees. Now, the Columbia River is just really like a slow-moving lake. Today, it takes about 90 days for the Columbia River to go through the state of Washington. And as it goes through eastern Washington for 90 days, it warms up. In fact, my favorite bass fishing spot in the summer is right here on the John Day River. It's, it's right at the Columbia. And, and, and there, the water temperature in the summer is 78 degrees. Whoa, it used to be 42 degrees. Now it's 78 degrees. What does that mean? Oh, you should nog him. Go way back at the beginning of the semester. You're right. The warmer the water temperature, the lower the dissolved oxygen. So there's less oxygen in the water. 
There's been many cases where there'd be a, a river that's been dammed, and as these salmon are going up, there's uh, 10,000 salmon in the water, and there's so little oxygen, they use up all the oxygen in the water, and then all at once, 10,000 salmon, they suffocate and die. No. Oh, why, why is bad? It slows down the water. Temperature goes up. Dissolved oxygen go down. Now, S-O-S, save our salmon. How are you going to save our salmon? If these are so uh, so bad for salmon, we got $3 billion to save the salmon, what can we do? You got it. Let's blow up dams. In the state of Washington, they've already blown up three dams. Uh, now we're looking at seven dams that are on the, on the, uh, on the Snake River. Uh, those might be uh, uh, dams that might be a pro a good to blow up. One thing is to blow up the dams. But we need dams for electricity. What's another thing we could do if we were to save our salmon? Well, it's the problem for the baby salmon. The baby salmon get killed by the propeller. So what can we do? Good thinking. You were thinking, can I put a net over that propeller to stop the babies from getting in? Oh, then all the babies would get stuck there and then our power would go out. Keep thinking about it. Baby salmon, they swim at the surface. So could you? Great idea. What they do is they pour water over the dam. When the baby salmon are coming through, they pour water over the dam. And then the baby salmon, they go over the dam rather than through the propeller. You know, another thing that happens on the Columbia River is they gather all the baby salmon up in the first dam and they give them a boat ride all the way down. And while they're in this boat, water's always being flashed into the boat so they can always smell the water so they can remember which way to come home. And then there's, a, there's like a, the locks at, at each dam and it goes through each lock. When I go bass fishing down the Columbia River, I see these salmon transport barges all the time. And that's what they're doing, is they're giving the baby salmon a boat ride. If we are in school, we do salmon for two days. We go into each one of these a lot more in depth. Those that take a, a took AP Environmental Science, uh, this was the short answer question on the AP uh, Environmental Science uh, test two years ago. It was, what are all the ways that uh, salmon recovery could happen on the Columbia River? And it was all these, just verbatim, all these things. There's a couple great videos that we had watched in class also. Hopefully you've talked about it in AP Environmental Science. If you love AP Environmental Science, if you love marine biology, and if you do it as a, as a major, well, at some point in your working career, you will work on salmon recovery. And you'll work on one of these issues that we're talking about here today. Next thing is logging. How is cutting trees up in the mountains bad for salmon? No, the trees don't hit them in the head. Uh, uh, but if you have a big mountain, a big mountain is supposed to be green with a whole bunch of trees. Well, what happens when you log is you cut down the trees. And now all you see is you just see a whole bunch of brown and brown is dirt. And then it rains and what happens is that this dirt turns into mud. And what happens is that uh, it turns into a little creek and then this muddy water goes into a bigger creek. Remember what I said at the beginning of today's lecture? Salmon lay their eggs in rocky nests. It's important to have rocky nests because rocks have little holes in between each other rock. And by having little holes in between each other walk, water could go down and go across the egg membrane. And that's how the egg gets oxygen.
If mud is, is at the bottom and the salmon lay their eggs in mud, the mud is just going to suffocate the eggs. You thought you've seen rivers when they flood. When they flood, they get really, really brown. That's all the mud that's in the water. So all this mud over uh, years and years of logging has gone into all of our rivers and have covered up gravel spawning beds. Why bad? Why bad? Mud suffocates egg. Now, save our salmon. How are you going to save our salmon? Well, if this has been happening for uh, years and years, how can you undo the damage? You can't go into all the rivers with a big vacuum and vacuum out the mud. But what you can do is you go down these rivers and then you could dump a whole bunch of gravel. And if the gravel goes over the mud, now you got spawning areas for the salmon. S-O-S. Add gravel. Two rivers. I had somebody that graduated from Blanchett a couple years ago uh, sent me an email about their summer job. And their summer job is uh, every day uh, they snorkel down the Wenatchee River. Uh, they snorkel down the Wenatchee River and they're looking for salmon coming back. And then they're tracking where did the salmon lay their eggs. And then they're trying to find out does the Wenatchee River have enough spawning grounds to lay their eggs. And if they don't, where would be some good places where they could add gravel to help out the salmon? That could be your job. Irrigation. Irrigation is a uh, farmer puts a pipe in the water, uh, pumps out the water and puts it on his fields. I'm going to go fast because I only got a couple minutes left. Why is it bad? Is there's less water in the river. What does that mean? Well, if there's less water, the temperature is going to go higher and the dissolved oxygen is going to go lower. Write it down in your notes. S-O-S. Save our salmon. What are you going to do? One thing is you're going to limit irrigation. A lot of farmers are mad because they can't put water on their crops anymore. As they say, what do you want? Our farms or these stupid fish? We ruled for our stupid fish, or a good fish. Another thing you could do, do, you do is more efficient ways of irrigation. Instead of spraying your, uh, your crops, you're going to use drip irrigation and tri drip water onto it. That means there's going to be less evaporation. Next thing, straightening the rivers. This here is the same river. This is the Duwamish River that goes right underneath the West Seattle Bridge. This is what it looked like in 1917. That is what it looks like today. See what happened is there's this small company that started right here called Boeing. And Boeing had a runway. And then they started building bigger uh, airplanes. Bigger airplanes need a bigger runway. So what they did is they convinced the local government to have them straight in the river. And now that they've got a nice straight river, they could have a big long runway. Well, why is that bad for salmon? See, every bend is the water slows down and the energy gets transferred to the bank of the river. So over here, uh, the water would slow down at every one of these bends. Where it slows down is the resting spot. So over here, there's a whole bunch of resting spots for salmon. In today's river, there's not many resting spots. Why bad? No resting spots. Save our salmon. How can you save our salmon? Add resting spots. What they do is they dump in a big boulder. And now the salmon could go swimming up behind the big boulder. <laughs> and then catch their breath. And then they could put a log. And the salmon could go swimming up behind the log. All these things are to save our salmon. Guys, in a nutshell, that was high school salmon. You will learn about salmon again in college. When you do marine biology in college, uh, environmental science in college, um, uh, all those things, uh, you'll learn about salmon because it's going to be an important part of your career.
Uh, we got a test next class. I got to end this uh, video right now.